Nepal, high in the Himalayas, is one of the poorest countries in the world. The mountains that define this landscape are proving to be a natural barrier to development, preventing electricity from reaching many of the people who live here and literally keeping them in the dark. But a Canadian scientist has found a high-tech solution that could light up every corner of this country and offer people all over the third world a brighter future. Living in the world's highest mountain range, many of Nepal's 24 million people have no access to electricity. Days are short, and once the sun sets, they must find other ways to light their homes. The primary source of light, apart from just the fire in a typical rural Nepali home, is a kerosene wick lamp. It doesn't give very much light. It's very smoky. It's unhealthy. It's very dangerous, in fact. Many of them are just simple bottles. And if they do get knocked over, they basically become a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> the kerosene also has to be got to the village, which means the villager has to travel someplace to get it. And kerosene can, can take anything from 10 to 30% of the annual income of some of these poor rural villagers. The impact of not having enough light is immense. In many parts of Nepal, the children are working in the fields during the day. And this, this is the same in many other countries, which means if there is a study time, it's usually in the evening. And if there's no light in the home, there's no way they can study. It was whilst trekking as a tourist in 1997 that Scots-Canadian Dr. Dave Irvin Halliday began thinking about how he could help people here get clean, affordable lighting. As an electrical engineer, he knew that the cost of extending mains electricity into the mountains would be prohibitive. But a solution might lie in lighting that could run off small amounts of electricity generated in each village. Dave thought Nepal could leapfrog traditional lighting, which is costly and wasteful in energy, and opt for an emerging technology so advanced that it hadn't even been adopted properly in the West. Solid state lighting. If you think of a village of 100 homes of that, and each home is supposed to have like a 50 or a 100 watt bulb, you're dealing in kilowatts. That's very expensive to generate. I just thought there had to be some way of using solid state light emitting diode type lighting, which only uses a few watts to provide a useful level of light. But also it's very rugged and reliable and they're very low on the development curve. There's an enormous amount of potential left in solid state lighting. It's going to be the lighting of the third millennium. There's no question. Traditional incandescent light bulbs have changed little in over 100 years. When electricity is passed through a bulb, 90% is wasted as heat rather than light. Light emitting diodes produce virtually no heat making them many times more efficient and far longer lasting. But until recently, LEDs could only produce small amounts of colored light, and so were only used as power indicators on everything from cassette players to computers. But once back in Canada, Dave heard about a Japanese company that had made a breakthrough and invented a new powerful white LED that might be suitable for home lighting. So he sent off for some samples and began to experiment. I'd have to say that probably one of the most meaningful experiences in my life was the, was the day that we actually switched on our first white LED. We'd been in the lab for five minutes to let our eyes get dark. This was at one-tenth of one watt. And when we switched it on, I, I remember, like it were yesterday, saying to my technician, good God, a child could read with the light of a single diode. Armed with the first generation of white LEDs, Dave designed a simple lamp that could run off a portable battery and use less than one watt of power. In 2000, he and his wife paid for lamps to be installed in two remote villages to prove that this new technology would work in the mountains. As evening approaches, villagers come in from the fields and daily prayers are recited in the gompa, the village temple.
But while candles are still used during the ceremony, the prayers are now recited by the light of one of Dave's lamps. Once darkness falls, members of each family gather for the evening meal. They're used to sitting in smoke-filled rooms with little or no light, often cooking and eating by the light of the fire. But since the arrival of the LED lamps, children can now spend an hour studying every night, and families enjoy clean, affordable light in their homes. When the battery is charged, we use the electric lamp for light in the house. Otherwise, we have to bring kerosene here from Dabcha and use the kerosene lamp. We don't have to face nearly so many problems with the electric light. The money we normally use to buy kerosene, we can now use to buy food and other items. Having this light means a lot to me. It hasn't just lit up my home, it has also lit up my heart. <laughs> as well as saving money in the short term, the lighting systems will have far-reaching benefits for the children in Tula Pokhara. Growing up with LED lights instead of smoky kerosene lamps will greatly reduce the health risks and improve levels of education and literacy here. We feel that education is knowledge. There can be no development of any kind here if there is no education. We used to really struggle with this. We'd send our children off to our school to study. When they came back from school, they would have to do their homework by the light of the kerosene lamps. The thick black smoke from the kerosene would go into their noses and ears. That smoke was very unhealthy and it used to make the children ill. Now we have this electric light that we can turn on for them to do their homework in the evening. The electric light is as valuable as gold for us. That's what we all feel. The next morning, Dave shows a family in the village how to use the solar charging system he's brought from Kathmandu. It's very simple. All the family has to do is make sure that the solar panel is just facing the sun directly. Dave's hope is that this will be the start of a little business for the family, with other villagers paying a few rupees to charge their torch batteries. Like the lamps he installed here two years ago, this is a pilot project, which Dave will assess when he comes back to the village in a year's time. Since its humble origins in Tulo Pokhara, Light Up the World has expanded, and Dave now runs projects in India and Sri Lanka. His determination to light up the lives of the world's poor has earned him a Rolex Award for Enterprise and shown how third world countries can use the very latest technology to help them develop. Dave's hope is that the clean, safe and environmentally friendly LED lamps will help solve the problems of lighting and literacy across the globe. I think home lighting is one of the three or four primary necessities of life, along with, for example, clean water. And if we can be instrumental in bringing light to many of the two billion people in the developing world, I think we'll have done a pretty decent job.